Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to Transport Fever 2. Now, before I get started with the episode, apologies that it's a day late. Basically busy week at work, all that stuff. You know the excuses by now, but I do apologize anyway. Um, at least the video is coming out. That's how I try and look at it, but I guess that's not necessarily a good excuse. Anyway, welcome back to Transport Fever 2. This week we are continuing what we started last week with connecting up some of the northern towns and industries here uh, along the map. Now, the first part of this video was recorded like two weeks ago. Uh, it was recorded just after last week's episode, in fact. So you'll have to forgive me if I don't quite remember everything that happens here. But uh, parts two and three were recorded this week. So I do know what happens there. I can tell you that we've got some station rebuilds going on, some huge track infrastructure projects, uh, not just this week, but also over the coming weeks as well. As I start to gear up to, to drag this network uh, into a, a functional state, shall we say, and actually get things to work as anticipated. Um, and then we've also got like new roads being built, new truck stops being built, new connections being made, all of that good stuff. Uh, there's a lot happening, basically. So um, buckle in, get ready for uh, for quite a, a lot of building and especially routing. We've got a lot of vehicles that get routed in this episode, including a question, actually, that I have to do with one of the truck stops and one of the truck routes that I build in this episode that has made me want to go back and just basically destroy every freight line on the network and start again from scratch. Because something isn't quite working how I anticipated it would. Uh, and that's kind of annoying me a little bit. Um, but yeah, one of the the main parts of this project is getting Maltby Parkway to turn into this huge bustling hub. Not just passenger traffic, which we've technically already got, but... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, a huge amount of uh, freight traffic as well is part of the plan, uh, including extending these good stations that we've got here. So there's the one here at Dorking, uh, Ely, Totten, uh, i trying to remember the names of the other towns, Guysborough, I want to say North Allerton, but I know it's North Allerton. Is it Normanton? I think it's Normanton that we have. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of them, basically. There's a lot of them. And then also looking at some of the stations like Scunthorpe and Framlingham that currently have got very bad... In fact, Scunthorpe doesn't even have a, um, a freight station at the start of this episode. It does by the end, you'll be pleased to know. But it doesn't at the start. Um, so we will get that uh, up and running as well. And um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on basically. I'm trying to fill time right now while the first part of this episode plays out because like I said, I can't exactly remember uh, exactly what happens in it. It's literally just linking up industries though. Um, one of the most satisfying things I have in this game right now is, you'll see it here, I link up this, uh, this goods factory to Maltby Parkway and it's that bit where you click on the factory and you click on suppliers and you can start to see other industries across the map realizing that this one has been connected. And therefore, it starts producing commodities that that factory can um, process into goods. Uh, I don't know why I'm using really elaborate words as well, but there we go. Uh, and it's it's just it's a good thing to know that it's all working. Which brings me on to the complaint that I have, uh, and maybe the solution that you guys will be able to find for me. Because I go back to it like five times in this episode, and I still haven't found a solution. So there's an oil sand um, quarry, I don't really know what you'd call it, extraction site up near Ely that I uh, hook up to the network. And we have an industry down in the south. Uh, I think it's a fuel refinery that turns oil sand into both fuel and sand. So I figured, you know, hey, that's, uh, that's going to just pick up the oil sand. It's going to take it to Dorking. From Dorking, it's going to be trained down to Maltby. And then from Maltby, it's going to be trained down to, I think it was Luton. And then from Luton, it'll be trained down to, um, I want to say Rothwell, but I don't think it is Rothwell. But wherever that station is that's right near the the fuel refinery. For some reason, oil sand isn't being generated by Ely's oil sand extraction site. Um, and I've checked, double checked, triple checked. I think I've like sextuple checked that every single vehicle along that route from destination from sorry from origin to destination can carry oil sand and as far as i'm aware they can so i have no idea at all why oil sand isn't being um produced 
I've even linked up another fuel refinery at Hatfield because I thought maybe it's just too far away. Maybe it has to take too many um, jumps to get to the uh, the fuel refinery. So I connected up a new one in Hatfield, uh, which, you know, it's one or two less steps on the ladder, as it were. Nope, same problem, still won't work. So I have absolutely no idea what's going on there. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comments down below. Or, you know, if you're um, watching this because of a Reddit post, feel free to comment there as well. Let me know what's going on with that. I, I have a feeling the reason is, is because the, um, the origin and the destination are too far apart. So the game doesn't think it's viable to send out those goods. I think that might be the reason behind why it's not working. In which case, you know, fair enough. Uh, I've got a couple of trucks running the route right now. They're not costing me a huge amount of money, so I'll just leave it going. But it's, I just find it weird that some of the other industries in this area that have to go through the same process pretty much um, don't seem to have a problem with um, with connecting all this up. Like, you know, they're still producing goods that are being transported and likewise goods are being trans uh, produced elsewhere that are being transported in. Again, I'm, I'm having a bit of a brain fart. It's Friday afternoon. I'm recording this voiceover. So my head is not quite perhaps where it should be uh, for, for um, coherent speech. But yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm at a loss as to why this one industry in particular has decided it doesn't want to play ball. So the reason I said about ripping out all the freight lines and starting again was... I had the idea that the solution might be to just have a dedicated oil sand train that runs from, say, Dorking right the way down to Hatfield, and that will be where it gets dropped off. Now, technically, I have that but split into three. So I've got the truck from Ely to Dorking, then I've got the small freight trains from Dorking to Maltby, and then from Maltby, I've got the um, Seaford to... I want to say Luton. I think it's Seaford to Luton um, freight service, which I believe stops at Hatfield. And then from Hatfield, I had a truck that would have taken the oil sand to the fuel refinery. Now, from what I can tell, there isn't even fuel, uh, sorry, oil sand coming from the existing extraction site that does work uh, up to the one at Hatfield. So that that does tell me that there is something wrong in that leg of the journey. But I can't put my finger on what it is because as far as I'm aware, every train that runs along that route that carries freight can carry oil sand. So I'm a little bit at a loss. In fact, this is me adding that um, connection. I think I have a generic truck here. Actually, no, I already had a generic truck here that delivered into Hatfield. So this is the this is the oil sand and the sand one. Uh, and then this is me doing the oil sand here. And it just doesn't work. Oh, it is Rothwell. I think I just saw there. I think it is Rothwell. This is me trying to connect it up uh, at the bottom end here. You can see I've got it all hooked up there. It seems to work. You know, fuel's still getting delivered um, to and from. We've got fuel from here now that goes up to other parts of the network. So it's not like it's too far away or anything. But for some reason, it just doesn't want to work. And I'm at an absolute loss as to why. So... Maybe someone spotted something in this video. If you if you have, let me know. You can see here I'm adding oil sand as a, a transportable commodity at every station there. And I'm pretty sure I did the same thing on the Seaford one. In fact, I think the Seaford one, the only thing it doesn't carry is food because we've got the food loop train. And I'm pretty sure I told it not to carry food. Uh, but everything else is fair game. I even made sure that it's got wagons that can carry oil sand. I'm just... I don't know, guys. I do not know. But it's it's been doing my head in for the last, like, week or so. Trying to work out why this damn thing doesn't want to work. Uh, and I'm at, I'm at a total loss. I'm completely 100% stumped. Um, it's beyond my limited capabilities, I feel. So, we'll put that one on the back burner for now. Um, if there's a solution that can be found, then believe me, I will come back and fix it to make it work. Because that would be awesome. Next part of the project then, uh, oh, I'm just messing around with the oil sand here. So again, you see I'm constantly checking, why is this not working? And then I keep going back over here and I'm like, surely this one carries oil sand. Yes, it does. So why is this one not working? And, you know, the trucks can carry the, the commodity. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to enable it in the line. Um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I do keep going back to it, but I do eventually give up. 
Uh, we've got some more grain here being transported. There's a livestock farm that gets hooked up as well. So we've got livestock trains now traveling. In fact, I think I have a dedicated livestock shuttle that goes backwards and forwards. I'm taking livestock from Maltby down to, I want to say, uh, I want to say it goes down to, is it Harrow or Hereford? I believe it's one of those places, but it might not be. I might have found another livestock meat processing plant but i can't remember where it was it might even be down at um, chipping norton i can't remember guys i cannot remember it was two weeks ago okay um but something else i do here in this first part technically first and a half part because uh actually no first part yeah this is just the first part looting here gets a little extension um now that um i've got the mod that enables larger platforms you know, larger, sorry, larger station spreads with platforms. I might actually go back and rebuild the tram stop there at Luton's freight terminal and have it all as one integrated uh, station. I think that might make more sense, but we'll see about that. Uh, something else that I'll do again in a set. Oh, I do some traffic stuff as well, which I think gets added. I can't remember, but I decided to add a ship line that runs right the way from up here at Seaford, right the way down to Poulton. Uh, so basically north coast to south coast and eventually there will be other i mean there are already lots of stops along the way but there will be other stops along the way in the future as well um and this was done purely as a solution to the oil sand problem i thought maybe if i can just get oil sand to here it'll get loaded on boat and then it'll get taken straight the way down to Poulton, and then it'll be loaded on a train there that then comes back up um let's see if i crayford but i think we've got a train that goes or a a truck that goes from Crayford to Poulton and that's where I'm getting confused but effectively it'll get to the fuel refinery that's what I thought uh, alas also not the case very very annoying now I was trying to add a stop here at Seaford do I add a stop here at Seaford I think I do so we've got Seaford and then we've got Seaford um, freight terminal then we have Newton Acliff of course then we've got Luton freight terminal and then right the way down here we've got Poulton uh, and this is the new line. It's a very, very long line. It crosses over itself about 12 times um, between each stop. I will eventually get to grips with um, river waypoints. To be honest, with the, the recent update, that was the thing I was least excited about, was the, uh, the waterway waypoints. Yeah, it's annoying to have these constant crossovers, but... In my opinion, you still have that with aircraft anyway, so it's never going to be completely solved until that's also taken care of. So it's cool that they've done it. Don't get me wrong. Um, the roadway points are very useful indeed, but the waterway ones I'm not. I'm not that fussed about. To be honest, I'm not that fussed about. Um, so I will use them eventually, but it's not a a big deal right now. Um, so yep, yeah, there was me checking the oil sand again, wondering why that wasn't working. Still don't know. Still have no idea, guys, whatsoever. Uh, again, comments, very much appreciated. We'll see if we can get to the uh, the root of the problem and fix it. It is very satisfying as well to see all these freight stations just absolutely chock-a-block with, uh, with goods waiting to be transported. And the variety as well. It was never the plan to have trains carry everything. Um... You know, the vanilla game, you can't do that unless you have one of each type of wagon. Whereas in the, the modded game that I'm playing here, it was possible. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit, you know, using a cheat code or something. But at the same time, um, I'm not going to complain too much about it. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that I'm too miffed about. And I'm kind of glad that these mods do exist because it's made my life a lot easier. But yeah, it is what it is, basically. Uh, right, step two then. So this is part, technically part two, uh, and this is this week's footage. So we're uh, we're up to the modern day now, uh, and we're reworking Scunthorpe. So Scunthorpe now has a new passenger platform. It's also about to get some freight platforms added as well. Um, one part of this I would have liked to have changed is these. Um, these junctions in and out of the station. They're too uniform. Now I know around about this time, so what are we at, the 1940s? I know around about this time stations were starting to be consolidated slightly and junctions were being simplified and things like that. And it was a good thing, don't get me wrong. Um, 
But I think right now, with where I'm supposed to be in, in terms of the timeline of this game, I feel like some of my stations are a bit too futuristic still, if that's something you can have in a game like this. I just feel like, you know, they're not um, they're not representative of the time period, shall we say. So I might go back and make the junctions a little more chaotic. Or I might just not care. <laughs> that's also something else. It's a very strong possibility. Uh, but yes, yeah, Gunthorpe gets rebuilt. That's where I'm trying to go with this. And as you can see... We've gone quite, um, there's quite a change to the way this worked. We had the split tunnels for a start. That's now gone. This road that I'm building here becomes immediately redundant in a little bit as well. So I don't get too attached to that. Uh, signaling, we're starting to enter the, uh, I suppose the digital age. But it, I mean, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. We're heading towards color light aspect signaling is where I'm going with this. Um, which means we do end up with... Bit of a mishmash across some of the route here, but I think it looks kind of cool. And one thing I do like about the color signals here, kind of haven't haven't really done a good job with it there, but uh, the approach to Scunthorpe Station here, I actually do the, um, where is it? Any second now, you'll see me build it. Any second now, I'm just looking for it in the list right now. There. Uh, and we actually have the one gantry with two signals on it, which I really like. I think that looks really, really cool. Um, so that's something I'm happy about. At this point, I was going to build a new freight station here at Scunthorpe. And I thought, what the hell am I doing? I've actually got access now to larger station sizes. So um, I come in and add it this way instead. And something else I'm starting to do now as well, particularly on freight only lines is I'm trying to use the landscape a little bit more so previously we just carved a hole straight through the center of the terrain whereas now I'm trying to make it look a little more methodically planned like they were trying to make it follow the contours of the land uh, and because of that um, oh, I'm just about to destroy loads of people's homes as well to build these um, little freight storage yards because I imagine Scunthorpe is going to be a particularly big and busy station and because of that, you'll see here that we actually have the um, the exit lines here to the freight yard curve away and around the hill here, rather than tunneling underneath it like we have with the passenger lines. Now, you could argue that with the passenger lines, it was a case of directness is best. You could also argue that this freight line is where the line used to run before the passenger line was built. Uh, and you can say that the old line was became freight only and the new one, uh, sorry, the old line, yeah, sorry, the old line became freight only and the new line was built for passenger haulage. That's one argument that you can make. And to be honest, I think that's the one that us amateur historians would probably go with because it sounds better. Something else that I'm trying to do here as well is grade separate the exits and entrances to these freight only platforms. Um, as it turns out, Considering I've got the realistic slopes mod, I thought that would be the biggest challenge. As it turns out, that was actually one of the easiest parts of this build. Um, was creating a convincing uh, set of flyovers. That's it. It's uh, one of the easiest parts, in all honesty. It was pretty damn simple to get this all in. This one here especially I thought would be really challenging. But uh, no. I think one of the advantages I had was the, the track, the main track, was was sloping up from a tunnel anyway. So... Already I was at a higher level, um, and it wasn't therefore too difficult to uh, to get it across. That's probably one of the reasons. This um, south side, though, I thought was going to be a challenge as well. And again, turned out to be relatively easy. Now, again, these, these junctions here are quite sort of built in a way where perhaps I should redo them. But that one there I actually quite liked, so I decided to keep it. I think it, it actually worked out quite well. This bridge also looks pretty decent, so I was pretty happy with that. And then it was a case of up and over and then down. And I think I managed to get it. Oh, no, I went after the level crossing and just um, knocked it in like that. This one here, I want it to run parallel. We, we do this a lot. There's a lot of parallel mainline running. Again, I think it, it kind of looks cool, so I just stuck with it. There is also one section between Blackburn and Down and Wimborne where I just build an entirely new dedicated freight route which i think looks pretty cool i think it's actually worked out very very well hopefully you guys watching will agree um 
I just thought it was a better idea to get the uh, the trains away from, sorry, the freight trains away from the main line. Uh, you'll see why I had to do it. And again, it's to do with this, you know, realistic slope contour kind of thing. But ultimately, I think it was the right thing to do, the smart thing to do. And I think it worked out quite well. So I'm pretty happy with all of that as well. I'm running out of things to talk about, believe it or not, in this little bit. There is more rebuilding and stuff going on. And I'll be able to talk about that. But this Gunthorpe rebuild took actually longer than I thought it would, which is um, interesting. We do do something. Ah, yes, yeah, so I got this little truck station here as well, accessible from um, from both sides. I don't know whether or not building it like that was a good idea or not, but it is what it is. And we've got these um, three truck routes right now that will go around the city. Technically, I could do it as one, but the capacity of trucks right now, it made more sense to do it as three separate ones. Uh, rather than having one that stops three times. I think it just worked out better. Is it three that we've got? Yeah, it is three that we've got. I just saw the third one there as I was talking. There's two and there's three. There we go. Lovely stuff. Uh, and this is kind of the basis for what we're working with from now on. So Framlingham here, this didn't need a major rebuild. It's only a two-platform um, station, although the big rebuild on this one is the fact that um, the station has been extended. So technically... We can now have 320 meter long freight trains on certain parts of the network. Uh, how feasible it will be to convert the rest of the network to enable that, I don't know. Uh, it might not be feasible at all. Who knows? But we'll try. We'll see. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Um, again, I'm talking a bit gibberish, I know. But... <sighs> Basically, I will try and make it work. I will try and do some retrofitting to existing stations. If that became... Uh, wow, can't talk now. If that becomes not possible for whatever reason, then we'll have larger trains that run through the major hubs. And then we'll have smaller trains that then stop at the, uh, the smaller hubs. So, for example, Hatfield Riverside. That one might be very, very difficult to upgrade. So, in that instance, we'll have a train that goes from, say... Um, Seaford down to Luton and then from this is Luton Freight Terminal not Luton Station and then from Luton Freight Terminal we'll have a train that shuttles between Luton and Newton Acliffe and it will stop at um, let's say Gravesend is it Gravesend? I think it is Gravesend it'll stop at Gravesend and it'll stop at Hatfield and that'll be the way to go and then these behemoth trains will be able to carry pretty much everything whereas some of the um the smaller trains, they might be a bit more limited depending on what's needed at the stations they go to. I think that might be a better way of just running the network as a whole. That might also fix my oil sand problem, who knows. Right, Blackburn. This one was a task in itself as well. Uh, one of the biggest problems with Blackburn is the, the, uh, the inclines at either side of the station. So Blackburn was built before the realistic slopes mod. And because of that, um, we end up with... Uh, First of all, I forgot this part of the line was four track. I tried to build a two track main line. That was mistake number one. Um, and then I had to try and like rebuild this entirety, like this entire section of line. And it was a bit of a nightmare. But, you know, I do get it done. That's the main thing. I love these split bridges as well. They look completely stupid for the most part. Um, it's this section. It's where the, the viaduct arch stops mid arch. You'll see what I mean in a second when the uh, the camera moves around. So it's not like the arch ends and then the, it transitions into the steel deck. Uh, the the arch is, is still, like, it's half done, basically. And then there's this steel deck. It just looks stupid. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it is what it is. Also, this little road bridge here, uh, the little bridge over the road, I think this looks pretty cool as well. I'm just, I was just working out how to do the... Um, the bridge on ground mod how to actually use that turns out it's not too difficult um i was just being a derp but yep this is all linked up and looks cool now as well and as i said i love that little bridge when the road gets built underneath it i think it looks really cool there we are and then i just knock it down one just to make it look more realistic and then we connect the roads up either side and we're done on that bit at least now, the freight station here at Blackburn, a bit like Scunthorpe. It's not quite as big as Scunthorpe's. It's a cross between Framlingham and Scunthorpe, basically. 
we've upgraded it again it's um 320 meters long uh the difference with this one is we've got that extra passenger platform on the western side of the freight station and the eastern side of the passenger station and that does cause a little complication with the station design but ultimately I end up being quite happy with the uh, the final result. I think it comes out really well. I wanted to avoid doing a major rebuild here, but you'll see in a second, um, I, I had really no choice. And that's where the complications come in with the realistic slopes mod. But we'll come back to that in a second. Now, I believe that is, yep, that's eight modules, if I can count, which I believe I can. Uh, it looks like eight to me. We've got three dedicated freight platforms. And then we've got one that's a hybrid passenger slash freight. And again, if I end up running slightly smaller freight trains, that would be a good example of where to use it. Would be on that that smaller platform. I think that'd be a cool time to uh, to actually use it. This dedicated freight bridge is basically the same design as the uh, the passenger bridge next door, but different design, uh, different textured bridges. Basically, it's dual track here, and this is where our dedicated freight only line begins. And from here, it runs all the way up to Down and Wimborne. And joins the existing station there on a new alignment so you can already see there curving sharply away from the existing track uh the gradient here was all wrong gradient that's the word i've been looking for that all this time i keep saying incline slope gradient is the word that's the correct one um and then yeah we slalom our way through the countryside at this point i thought turn on the contours and then followed them a little too religiously and ended up getting into a bit of a mess here um, and then I end up taking this right back and going through that little gap that you can see at the top of the screen there. There we go. Trying to avoid building tunnels and embankments where possible. And then we end up coming through the trees. And we basically run alongside the main line into Dan and Wimborne at this point. Um, there you go. The heat map was getting a bit annoying, so I turned that off. So we have still got the connection here for trains that need to run on the main line. Eventually, there will be a triangle built where the bypass is, so trains can access the bypass from Down and Wimborne. And again, that will mostly be used for freight traffic, to be honest. Uh, but for this section here, um, you know, I, I needed to, to keep the existing connection to the main line, but at the same time, connect up to the new line. So you can almost see where the divergence takes place. Uh, and that's basically what this is it's a divergence. I believe I've signalled all these tracks. I didn't see myself signal the freight line there, but I think I come back and do it. Uh, and then we got to build the uh, the northern exit to Blackburn Station. And again, this ends up every bit of track you can see on the screen right now ends up getting rebuilt um, because it it just the the gradients you know the realistic gradients wasn't working as it should. So. We removed the original crossover there as well. We have this new section here. This all gets replaced. This is where I realized that the realistic gradients is, is it's a lovely mod, don't get me wrong. The realism is fantastic, but my God, is it annoying sometimes. So um, we end up just doing a complete rebuild and there'll be a lot of stations actually. There'll be a lot of lines even around the network that will get this treatment where things will get removed, things will get replaced things will get rebuilt, wherever it might be, um, to make it more realistic. And, you know, that's that's um, something I'm actually kind of looking forward to getting stuck into at some point. Um, but I don't know. I'm sure I said actually what next week's episode was, and I've forgotten already. So <laughs> good as I am. I think it is station rebuilds and stuff like that. So there's, the, you know, plenty of opportunities. Oh, this is something else that was annoying. Uh, and again, basically this entire route between Yeovil and Blackburn gets rebuilt because of this. I can't even build parallel to existing tracks because the slope is too steep. Uh, and again, there. At this point, I, I don't even think I could add to the existing track because slope was too steep. So this isn't even running parallel. This is just trying to build off of the existing one. And it ended up being impossible. Then I, uh, I dug too deep here. So I had to go back and do that again. Ended up coming in too high. So we just remove all that and we start again. And this is, this is me just, I mean, I'm still learning the game. That's the thing. I'm still not nowhere near being able to uh, to run the game at an advanced level. I'm still very much a beginner who's learning the trade. Uh, that curve there is very, very sharp. Uh, trains have to slow down significantly for it. But I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. 
I don't think um, I don't think it costs us. Again, I think it, it's quite realistic to have that. So I'm not too upset uh, that we've got that. You, again, I'm talking gibberish here. You'll have to forgive me. My brain all over the place. But it, I don't think it's a bad thing having these curves where sometimes you have to slow down. Um, it's realistic for a start. Uh, oh, yeah, we have to rebuild the approach to Blackburn Station here in a second. Because, again, slope too steep. The, this, again, it's realism. It's great. I love it. But, my God, it's annoying. Also, when the auto signal doesn't work and you have to go through and manually place them, that's annoying too. And then, eventually, um, getting everything here connected up. So satisfying when it works. But, my God, just that, that build-up period is annoying as hell. So you now got a five track bridge there as well because I couldn't get the connection done just in time. So we had to do it like that. Uh, these bridges though coming out of Blackburn Station, I do love them. They look so much nicer now. Very, very happy with those. Again, we got the weird derpy junction, but that's fine. At least for this part, it's fine. And on the southern end of the station here, uh, again, we've got we're just mimicking the bridge design that we already had. Uh, and then we do the junction design again, like so. And it works out. It actually works out pretty well. Now, this is the uh, the unusual part of this build because we've got this other little track here, which is going to be used by freight trains still. But right now, I believe the only train I've got actively using it is the, um, the push-pull service between Wokingham and Maltby. And it, it runs between Maltby and Wokingham. It uses that extra platform. Whereas the uh, the freight services right now are limited to the three freight platforms. The, free, the three main freight platforms at Blackburn. Because the other one is a freight platform, of course. But yeah, we're coming towards the end of the episode now. Hopefully, I've been coherent through most of this. If not, I apologise. Um, again, any solutions to the oil sand problem, feel free to drop them in the comments section down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, um, there's not much left for me to say other than thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Uh, wow, I've just missed out an entirety of my outro there. That's the brain fart. I think I've gone back to like 2016 M4J there uh, when I wasn't even called M4J. Thank you very much guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And of course if you're enjoying the series. Drop those comments down below. Like I just said. Slip back into it seamlessly. That's what the pros do. Uh, not that I'm a pro. Technically I am. But whatever. Um, yeah. Drop those comments down below with ideas for future episodes. And of course if you can help me solve my oil sand problem. Besides that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out. If you have already subscribed to the channel. Thank you guys for your continued support. Enjoy the rest of your week. Not that there's much of it left. But have a good weekend everybody. And uh, yeah. I'm going to leave you with some music for a little bit. Because there is a little bit left of this episode. But I'm pretty much done talking. Because I can't. Like my brain just clocked off about two hours ago so you'll have to forgive me but yeah thanks guys for watching enjoy the rest of your week have a good weekend and until next time i will see you soon